Consider the following circuit. Here we have a power supply, a resistor, an inductor, and a movable switch. Right now the switch is in the middle. We could move the switch to this position here to connect this so that we would have a complete circuit right here, or we could move it here to have a complete circuit around the outside. At present we have neither, so there's no current flowing in this circuit at all. Now, let's imagine taking the switch and closing it right here. So now, current will begin to flow along this outside loop. None can flow here, of course, because there's no connection. Now, initially, the inductor is going to oppose uh, the current uh, due to the potential difference across the inductor that follows from Faraday's law of induction and the definition of inductance. We won't go into those details right here in this video, but the idea is basically that uh, initially the inductor is opposing this current. But over time, the current will build up, and as the current builds up and up closer to its maximum value, the rate of change of the current will decrease, and so this thing will drop to zero, and eventually you'll have a steady current built up. And so that's where we're going to begin our analysis. So imagine we've let this situation exist for a long period of time. We've got a steady initial current built up. And then what we want to do is connect, disconnect the battery. So we're going to move the switch from here to here. We're going to call that our time zero. So here we go. We're going to move the switch from here to here. So now, no current can flow here. Current can only flow along this loop. So the battery has been effectively disconnected from the rest of the circuit. So we might as well get rid of it because it's just distracting us. So let's apply the loop rule to the circuit that we have left. So we're going to start here and follow the current around the circuit. So we've got the voltage drop across the resistor. We've got the change of potential across the inductor. And that's all we have, so the sum of those changes in potentials around the loop must be zero according to the loop rule. All right, so now we have a first order differential equation in the variable i. The trick to solving this equation is to get all the i stuff on one side of the equation and get dt on the other, and then we've got something we can integrate. So let's do that. So now we have something that we can integrate. Uh, so let's do that over here. Here I've pulled out the minus r over l because that's a constant and so it can come out of the integral. Now, the integral of the left hand side will be the natural log of i. The integral of the right hand side will be minus r over l. Integral dt is just t. We'll have a constant of integration over here and one over here. We can combine those constants of integration on the right-hand side, so we get this result. So to get the current I, what we need to do is do the inverse operation of taking the natural log, and that is putting both the left-hand side and the right-hand side in the power of E. So here we go. All right, the left-hand side then gives us the current. The right-hand side gives us e to the minus r over l times t, and then times e to the c. But e to the c is just another constant. We can determine the value of this constant from our knowledge of the initial conditions. So if we plug in zero, for t, that is the conditions at time zero, we'd have e to the zero, which is one, and we'd have the current at time zero is equal to this constant here. So this constant here is simply the current at time zero, and we can write our result as follows. The current at any time is equal to the current at time zero times this decaying exponential factor. And that's our result. So let's look at what this result means. At time zero, we'll have e to the zero is one, 
the current will just be its initial value. That makes sense. That's how we found this value of this constant in the first place. And then at really large times, we'll have e to the minus a really big number. e to the minus a really big number gives you something really close to zero. And so what that means is at really long times, the current decays to zero. In between the initial value and zero, the current decays as a function of time, according to this expression. All right, that's all. Hopefully that will help you both understand uh, what this equation is and where it came from. And along the way, a little practice on solving a first order differential equation. Thank you.